Welcome to the Inside Syracuse Basketball Podcast. I'm Mike Waters. Today on the podcast, I'm joined by Ryan Blackwell. Ryan played at Syracuse from 1997 to 2000. He's now the head coach at Liverpool High School. And this summer, he will be involved as a coach for Bayheim's Army for the fifth consecutive year. I talked with Ryan about the Bayheim's Army roster for this year's TBT, including the remarkable Eric Dievendorf and some key additions from outside the Syracuse family. Ryan, how you doing? Good, Mike. How you doing? Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm doing great. And, and listen, it's it's. I'm so excited to have you on. Uh, you and I go way back. Yeah. Uh, like your your high school years in Rochester. Man. Um, so it's been quite a while. And uh, so I really, I always enjoy talking to you. So it's great to have you on the podcast. Thanks. Always good to be with you. Uh, before we get going on the basketball stuff, um, we, we have to acknowledge a great event in your life that just took place recently. Yeah. Um, we just came past Father's Day, too, you're, and it was your very first ever Father's Day. Congratulations on your newborn. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Lowell was born yesterday, about a month ago yesterday, which is crazy. Time seems to fly already, and um, I just changed the diaper a couple of minutes ago before jumping on the podcast, so... You know how that goes. You know, people talk about having kids and they tell you stories and you just don't realize and understand until you're into it. So, but I'm enjoying it. Definitely. Well, the only advice I can give you, it's not really advice, but it's, it's, uh, the days will go by slow sometimes. Mm -hmm. Uh, They they can be tough, but the years are going to go by so fast. So enjoy every minute of it. Yeah. That's what I keep hearing. So I will. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, if your brain isn't too foggy, let's get to basketball. <laughs> All right. You sleep deprived dad, you. Yeah. Um, another edition of Bayheim's Army is coming back to the basketball tournament. You're involved again. I think it's your fifth or sixth year in, in, a, in a row with the team. Um, you know, why come back? Coming back to this again, what do you like about Bayheim's Army and the basketball tournament that, that keeps bringing you back? I just think it's a great tournament overall. Uh, it's a great product. It's a great chance for me, you know, obviously to get away from the high school scene and to coach other guys, professionals, which, you know, I did before when I was in Japan and the town level is just a different talent level. Um, it's a chance to win money, which is always obviously an, an incentive, uh, but it's just fun to get with these guys. You know, the Bayheims army is, is basically an extension of the Syracuse basketball family. Because most of the guys, you know, even Kevin Belby, they were all graduates of Syracuse and we all played under Bayheim. And so it's kind of like a fraternity of, of guys getting back together and playing. And it's fun for me being in the community. Uh, they're so excited about it um, in town when this comes around. And it's kind of an extension of the NCAA tournament because it's something, gives something people to do and to look forward to. And it's just a fun, exciting time. Well, it really has been. It's amazing how this tournament has just taken off uh, from its early stages uh, mm-hmm. back when everybody was curious as to how anybody could run a tournament where you gave away a million dollars to a winner. Right. And, you know, how, how is that being funded? And now it's on TV every year. Uh, a couple of years back when they had the games at Onondaga County Community College, the, the place was packed. Uh, even Jim Beheim and current players are showing up to cheer mm-hmm. on. Uh, you know, the, the older guys. Um, yeah. So I agree. Great event. And, and this, this team that the, the names that have been announced uh, some familiar names, but a few to get excited about. Um, we have to start with the old dog though. I got to ask you, Eric Devendorf. He's coming back and it's so amazing. Eric, I don't, he hasn't played actual ball pro ball mm-hmm. in, in about five or six years. Yeah. And every year he comes back and he's one of your top players, a scorer. Um, you know, to, what exactly is it about Eric that allows him to lace them up every summer and, and be so good? Man, it's tough. It's a testament to him. He He's in better shape than most guys that are playing still, which is crazy. And he takes it serious. He he called me this morning, he wanted me to come at six o'clock or seven, seven o'clock this morning and, and work out with him. And I said, maybe if I'm not sleep deprived, you know, I said, I'm, ha- I'm a zombie half the time. So I said, I'll meet you later. 
in the afternoon, probably at the second session. But he takes care of himself. He's in the gym all the time. He works out. He shoots. He trains. You know, he's he takes care of his body. He eats right. Uh, he's a you know he's a vegan now, and he really takes care of himself. He's really changed his lifestyle, and uh, it's crazy. Just he's he's been our best player and our engine and our heart every year that I've been a part of this the Bayhams Army. So he just has a knack for scoring. He's a tough, mentally tough. Uh, competitor, and we just love having them. You know, I saw some quotes from Eric just the other day in an article by my my colleague Donna Detota, and he was saying, "Yes, uh, you know, while you know, in the past years, he's felt like he needed to be the guy and wanted to be the scorer with the ball in his hands, but he seems like he's he wants that to change in a way. He he wants to win so bad." He wants guy. He wants a better team around. He wants guys who want that ball too, and he's yeah. willing. He's willing to kind of give that away if that's what it takes to win. Did you see those quotes? And, and what did you think of those? Well, we've had a lot of conversations, even you know, the last couple of years. And he said, Ryan. He said, I can't. And I said to him, I said, You can't be our best player, a guy that hasn't played in three years. He's like, You can't be the guy who's the heart and soul and giving your all when you don't even play play professionally anymore. And you're just, I mean, and we love him for that, but it's, it's true. You have to have guys that step up. And I think this year, especially with the, the roster that we have and the additions, he shouldn't have to be that guy. But obviously there could be games where he's going to come out and have 15 to 20 and be that spark. Uh, if, whether he starts or comes off the bench, he's going to be a spark for us because that's just what he does. And that's it's great to have that luxury uh, with having him there. Syracuse fans love this team. They love Bayheim's Army every year, and they because they get to see these these players that they cheer yeah. for when they were college. So let's run through the other former Syracuse guys on the team besides Eric. You got Malachi Richardson, yep. CJ Fair, yep. Ty, Tyler Lydon, Pascal Chukwu, mm-hmm. um, Andrew White, Chris McCullough. Okay. Where, where should we start with these guys? You want to start out at the, let's start with the wings, uh, Malachi okay. and Andrew. Yeah, you know, they played last year and Andrew's played the last two years. He played, you know, when he was here in Syracuse for the first time and love Andrew, ultimate professional comes in and, you know, if he can hit shots for us, which he's done multiple games last year, he didn't have such a great tournament, um, but he's not going to have to do as much, you know, because we have so many guys on the roster and then Malachi at the same time, I think he was a little bit disappointed in himself last summer because he didn't show, I don't think, what he's capable of showing. Uh, and I, I think heard he was, was a, more than a little bit disappointed. I heard he was he was really not happy with the way he played. Yeah, I, I would agree with him. I don't I don't think – I think we all know he can play better. Right. Um, I think it was his first tournament, and maybe – I don't know if he was coming off injury or if he was in the greatest shape that he needed to be in, but – so hopefully he's more in tune this summer and he's ready to go because he's talented. Obviously, he played in the NBA. Um, and Andrew, you know, played with the Knicks organization and their uh, and their G League. So those are two guys you definitely, if they can get it going in a tournament like this, you need guys to make shots. We're going to have to have that. I think Malachi did um, break his right hand or right wrist uh, playing in Italy. Yep. Uh, a season ago uh, before mm-hmm. last year's tournament. So. Uh, you know, it's understandable where, you know, he might have been shaking off some rust uh, going into the tournament. But I, I agree. He's an, he's, he's an electrifying player. Uh, Absolutely. Nice I remember player. during practice last year, during the TBT, he was complaining about it a little bit. Yeah. You know, when he would shoot, and I know you had to ice it down. I think he was just a little rusty because of that. Um, CJ. Love CJ. Do you? Yeah, I mean, when we coach, obviously he's – Watching him develop from a freshman to a senior year at Syracuse, how he got better and better and better and became that guy that you – very dependable, mid-range and just very humble, quiet, and just what about his business, business like a blue-collar, workman-like type attitude. And when I coached him at Bayheim's Army several years ago and got to the Final Four, I really enjoyed coaching him. Um, you know, he's just a fun kid to be around. You know, like I said, quiet and humble and just, you know, listened and just was very respectful. You know, a couple of athletic guys who can play multiple positions on the front line for you and also step out and shoot threes are Lydon and Chris McCullough. Um, it's interesting, though. Tyler hasn't been playing ball in the last mm-hmm. couple of years. Yep. Um, do you have any idea where he's at coming into this year's tournament? It's a good question because, obviously, we want to 
we wish we had him last year. Didn't work out. And I know he tweaked his knee. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some highlights of him on Instagram working out and playing one-on-one -on -one and doing going through drills and stuff like that. Uh, and he looks pretty good. But obviously, it'll be a different story when we're playing five-on-five -five and he's out practicing with the guys. So it'll be interesting to see how he is, you know, if he's 100%. Because, like you said, he's a guy at 6'9", six, 6'10", six, that can stretch the floor, play the four, even the five. Um, and in a tournament like this, you need guys like that, bigs that can stretch the floor and make shots. So that'd be big. You know, Chris McCullough has been playing overseas for so many years now. And actually, was it two years ago when you guys thought you were going to have him on Bayheim's Army? And he wounds up, I think, was it in the Philippines where he took his team to the championship? And he, they wouldn't lose. They, you needed him to lose so he could come right. back and play for you guys. And they just, and I think he was tournament MVP over there. So, He's obviously going to be good, right, and, and ready and primed to play. I mean, I think he's young. He's so athletic. I think he's gotten better and better. Um, like you said, we wanted him to play with us two years ago, but we were happy that he won the tournament. And then last year, you know, with COVID, it was just kind of up in the air, and a lot of things were going on in his life. I know um, we would love to have had him, but we didn't. So this year – if he's playing and Tyler's playing, that just gives us a whole other dynamic on both ends of the floor because he's also a rim protector at 6'11". He's long. Uh, he can run the floor. I know his perimeter game has gotten better. Um, he can knock down shots. So it'd be a great asset for us. I know. I, I remember being amazed at the videos I was seeing from the Philippines when he was – Yeah. <laughs> his team was on that run. Yeah. Um, if he's playing like that for you this summer, you're going to be all right. I think so. Last former Syracuse player on the roster. And this is an intriguing one, man. You got Pascal Chukwu. Yep. Now, he's not normally the type of guy you see in the basketball tournament. It's right. usually, you know, smaller centers or maybe even no center. Mm -hmm. And here you, you're getting a seven foot two guy. So, yeah, when you bring every once in a while on certain teams, you'll see a tall guy, a bigger guy. And I know. I read some of the comments of some of the Syracuse fans like we need more size. We need centers. But like you said, in this tournament, the teams that have won overseas elite, I mean, they had Justin Burrell, who's six, nine, maybe, right. you know, playing the five, uh, the Marquette team and Jamil Wilson, basically playing the five and the Carmen's crew, you know, Jared Seldinger, maybe, or some, some of the other guys, they go smaller, they go small ball. They just have guys that are tough minded, physical, but Pascal, at seven two, seven three, whatever he is, still brings a different element for us, especially if we're playing the zone, which he knows and understands. Um, that'll be tough for teams, I think, if we can play the zone the right way and having him in there in the middle, guys are going to have to think twice about, you know, getting into the paint, trying to make shots. He'll alter shots. And, you know, if he's active like he's been at Syracuse at times that we've seen, uh, I think it'll be a big plus for us. And, of course, he's he's been playing, but you know, he's Switzerland, right? Right, in Switzerland, and I think he was in Greece, too. Did I read that right? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how he's developed since he's, you know, left Syracuse. I always like to see how these guys have gotten better and better as they've gotten older. Now, here comes the interesting part of your roster. Yep. Okay. In the past, you might have added a guy here and there who who, who didn't play at Syracuse. So mm -hmm. you, you're, you had the kid from Colgate. Yep. Will uh, Raymond. Raymond. And a few years back, it was Willie Dean. Loved Willie, yeah, from Purdue. Great player for you. Yeah. This year, you, you've got a lot of outside flavor. Let's start first with the guard. Okay. Tyrese Rice, a former mm -hmm. Boston College guy, and Syracuse fans may not really remember him because he played at BC at the time when BC left the Big East mm -hmm. ahead of Syracuse. And, and, and so like around 2009 was his senior year while Syracuse was still in, in the Big East and uh, BC was in the ACC. Mm -hmm. I think he was ACC rookie of the year or all rookie team. So uh, he had a pretty good run at Boston College and he's been playing pro ball ever since. Ryan, I kind of like this addition. I love I it. The kind of point guard you need. I think so. I think, and I, talking to Devon and Belvin, those guys over the last couple of years, like I said, you need tough-minded, physical guys who are just ready to get after it. And uh, from what I've read, you know, I looked up some highlights. I watched some game film on him a little bit. And talking to Devo and 
some other people about him. They said he, he'll he be the perfect fit. He's got the Euro League tag. He's been doing great over there. He's a leader, um, and he's just willing to do the little things. He's a winner, and I think that's what we need. So that will be a great addition for us, for sure. Yeah, you know, I know some fans out there might get Europe, and but some it's kind of a mystery to them when guys are playing yeah. overseas. Mm -hmm. Tyrese Rice has been playing on good teams and good leagues. Right. You mentioned the Euro League, and, and you know he's been playing on teams in Greece, Spain. Um, I think he played on one of the better teams in Russia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know you're you're getting a guy who's been playing at a pretty high level. Um, yeah. In recent yeah. years. Yeah, there are a lot of guys that don't understand what it takes to play. And you, you think Europe, you think uh, if you're not in the NBA, you're not good. But these teams, and the, if you're playing on these teams, like you said, the high level Euro League teams, you're really good. Um, and I think his talent level and his resume speaks for itself. Now, I got to be honest, I don't know much about Kiefer Sykes. Same. I, know, I looked him up. He played his college ball at Wisconsin Green Bay. Mm -hmm. I had a better college career than I remembered. Yeah. I I honorable mention All American as a senior. Yeah. Um, but he too is he's playing in Italy, uh, China, Korea. Um, you were in Japan for several years. You know some mm -hmm. of those leagues over in Asia. Yep. Um, but tell me a little bit about Kiefer. Yeah, again. This was a, a new addition that Belby, um, he found him somehow. Belby's, you know, working his magic again. And he, they sent me the video and I uh, watched it. I watched some of his uh, highlights from uh, Australia. And he's uh, a Chicago kid. So, you know, he's going to be tough minded. And he's just another element, a quick guard that can make plays, get in the paint. Um, kind of like a John Gillen. Uh, can shoot and uh, just just a tough kid, another tough kid. I think both on the, both ends of the floor defensively, especially he's going to get after it, which we're going to need. You, we, before we got going here, we talked about a couple of these other guys. <laughs> and and I, I had to make sure that, we, that before, as we record this, that we're going to be okay to publish it. And you you seemed almost like not quite giddy. But very, very excited about it. a couple guys that you're bringing <laughs> in. And if, you, if Syracuse fans have been watching this tournament over the years, they're going to know these names. Yeah. DJ Kennedy mm -hmm. and DeAndre Kane. Yes. Two guys in the past that have played for Overseas Elite, which has basically been, you know, the New York Yankees of uh, the TBT over the yes. years. And, and these two guys are two of the Overseas Elite's best players. How did you get these two? I've when I heard that they were going to be a part of the Bahamas Army, because um, I was waiting to see if what they were going to do overseas elite. You know, they hadn't announced if they're going to have a team or not. And when I talked to Bellby a couple of weeks ago, he was like, what, "Do you have any ideas about players? What do you think?" I said, "Have you looked at DJ Kennedy and DeAndre Kane? Because in the past couple of years, when we lost them in the Final Four, and just watching them." And I've said all along, I said, we need some guys like that. Just tough, blue collar. They're perfect for the tournament. They know how to win. They're going to do the little things. They're going to play defense. They're going to rebound. They're going to hustle. And you need guys like that in this tournament. I mean, and on any team, basketball team, to win. And, you know, I was so excited when I heard that they were available and that they decided to uh, commit to us. It's unbelievable. Now, for, for the fans that don't quite remember, DJ Kennedy played at St. John's and was an mm -hmm. outstanding player there. Yeah. And he's had just a remarkable uh, pro career overseas. Mm -hmm. And DeAndre Kane is a former Iowa State guy. And yeah. I remember when he was at Iowa State, he was really good. Really good. How do you incorporate those guys into the Bayheim's Army? you know, a uh, locker room, as it were, you know, a bunch of guys who all share a common bond, you know, whether they played together or not at SU. CJ has mm -hmm. a bond with Malachi, you know, Tyler Lydon has a bond with Eric Devendorf because of being from Syracuse. So yes. how do you incorporate guys like Tyrese Rice, DeAndre Kane, DJ Kennedy into this alumni club? At the end of the day, these guys are professionals and it's about winning. And I think, if you just 
put the four banners up in front of these guys and say, this is what these guys did. You know, DeAndre Kane and DJ Kennedy won four in a row with overseas elite. They know how to get it done in this tournament. They know how to win. Um, and we're here for all the same reason. We're on the same page, whether you play five minutes or you play 20 minutes. It's not about your points. It's not about your resume. It's about winning and winning the money. And these guys know how to get it done. So I think if they can all pro approach it that way, just the professional attitude um, and selfless attitude, I think we'll be okay. Adding Kane and, and DJ Kennedy to your roster, and you're already a well-known team because mm -hmm. you've, you've been a, a, a basketball tournament staple for the last six years now. Um, and, you know, and Bayheim's Army gets a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. attention at, yep. in the summers. Um, but adding Kane and Kennedy now to this group, do you enter this year's tournament with a, with a bullseye on your back, even though you have, you've only been to the Final Four in it once? 100%. I think 100 yeah. percent. I think just like you said, Bayheim's army has a name, has a following, the Syracuse basketball family, Bayheim's name on the jersey. Um, you know, we've had a lot of success, even though we've only been to one final four. We've won a lot of games and been in a lot of close games. So just adding those two guys with their resume and what people know about them. You know, if you follow the tournament, I, there's definitely going to be a bullseye. People are going to be looking at us saying, if these guys don't win it this year, you know, then I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So we'll see. Like you said, if, if people can just buy in with this group, because 11 guys is a lot. That's a lot on a roster in a tournament like this. Yeah. Um, and so many, many minutes. And now with the Elam ending, you know, the game is really cut short. So guys are going to really just have to buy in um, and just do and just play their role. And that's it. I'm old school, Ryan. I'll admit that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you brought up the Elam ending. Yeah. I love it for the basketball tournament. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. I wouldn't mind it in AAU summer leagues. Yeah. Like that to keep you on a schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've ever been, yeah, I know you have been. You've, you've been to, a, you know, summer league stuff and you're like, you absolutely hate it when a game goes over time. Yes. Or goes long. Uh, what do you think of the, of the Elam ending? Is it something that, NBA or college would ever consider? Would you? Would you? Would you be a proponent of that? No, I like it for the tournament. It's grown on me for this tournament. It okay. definitely speeds the game up. But at the, on the other end, if we had the eight all ending a couple of years ago when we had that twenty five point comeback, you know that wouldn't have happened. So that takes that element out of teams being able to come back. Maybe you're twenty down. You know that takes it out. I was watching the. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets game the other day and they were down 20 and I was actually watching with Alan Griffin. He goes, they're going to come back and win. I said, eh, maybe this is NBA basketball. So you just never know. And they did, they came back there 20 down and they came back and won the game. Same with Philly being up 20 and losing to Atlanta last night. So that takes that element of teams, you know, when you say fight to the last minute until the buzzer sounds. So that takes that element out of basketball, but, for the, for the Elon Mini, for the tournament, exactly, specifically, I enjoy it. I think it's brought a different feel to it. And I think the fans have kind of, it's grown on them a lot um, with the target score. So I enjoy it. But for high school basketball or college or the NBA going forward, I wouldn't like it. Yeah. I, you know, I, you would lose Pearl Washington's half court shot. Yes. Uh, you'd lose Jerry McNamara's running three against Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. We never would have gotten the Bayheim rant after that game about not 10 <laughs> effing games. Yeah. Where, where would, where, where would, where would we all be without that? Right. Ryan. Right. Um, we wouldn't get overtime games. We, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't get overtime. Get Wallace to Jason Sapola to force overtime against Georgia in 96. Six but overtime games shot in that overtime. <laughs> Six overtime game in the Garden versus UConn. I mean, you don't greatest have game that. I've ever seen. Yeah, greatest game I've ever seen, and it would have what ended. It wouldn't even have ended on Devendorf's miss. Uh, there would have been a target score. He would have kept playing. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it I takes mean, that element out of so basketball. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we agree on that. Yes. Um, it, you're going to begin play this year on July 24th in Peoria. Mm-hmm. I, you spent a, some time in Illinois. A lot of time. You know, a lot about Peoria basketball growing up. 
That's Bradley University, of, right? Bradley University, yeah. But a lot of Illinois players have come from there. Uh, the McLean's the history of you know the McLean's and uh, F- Frank. Uh, who is it? Uh, a couple of guys that went to Illinois, but just the history of Illinois basketball is great. Just growing up there and being from Chicago and then Champaign, it's all kind of in the same area and circle. So I'm excited to get back there. Is there anybody that you, you were hoping to get on this year's team that, that couldn't for whatever reason that you're kind of like, man, I'd be nice. You know, it's so funny with the, with the Syracuse fans when you see comments and we post stuff and they're like, please bring Deion waiters or please bring Carmelo Anthony or Wes Johnson or bring all these guys. And like, that'd be great. <laughs> but like having Deion waiters, first of all, Deion waiters doesn't want to play in the TBT. Not right now at this stage of his career. He's still young. Carmelo Anthony's not going to come from playing, you know, 15 years in the NBA, making millions of dollars to come on a TBT roster. It's just not going to happen. I know Joe Johnson did it last year with overseas elite, which was great for fans to see. And it was, it was fun for the tournament, but uh, overall, I, I like our roster. I like what we have. There's not really anybody else uh, that I could say, you know, Wes Johnson, Rakeem Christmas, I've always respected. He would have been a great addition. Wes Johnson, um, I enjoy coaching Mike Benege when he was here a couple of years ago, uh, but I like what we have right now. I think if, I've always said we got to go outside the Warren family a little bit to get guys to really, if we're gonna have a chance to win this tournament. Of all those guys you mentioned, maybe Ben and Jay would have been a most realistic addition to the team. But this summer, he's going to be busy. I think he's with uh, the Nigerian national Nigerian team, trying yeah. to qualify for the Olympics. Right. So, you know, we'll allow him that. Yeah. We'll yeah, he wants that. to take a shot at the Olympic Games. That, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. The silent he can wait another year. Yep. Um, how excited are you to get into this year's tournament after last year's experience in the bubble? Because the TBT last year – was one of the first events that went ahead and played uh, and found a way to to make it work in, in mm-hmm. COVID. And, and, you know, kudos to the folks that run the TBT. It was an amazing success story, but I'm sure it wasn't the, the most pleasurable experience you guys have ever had. It wasn't. It was totally different, obviously. You know, everyone has different stories and experiences dealing during a pandemic of what they went through. But basketball specifically we were just happy to be back doing something and uh, at the time there's really nothing else on tv and you know being kind of like the guinea pigs for how something could run during a pandemic um i I know the nba was watching and like i said the tbt did a great job of putting everything together and following protocols and just having to be in a hotel basically 24 7 uh, was different you know john gillen got stuck in his room for two days straight because uh, something happened with his test. And of course, John Gillen messed it up. And um, he was in his, literally had to stay in his room for two days straight and couldn't come to practice. So uh, we had to basically enjoy each, each other's company in the, um, we'd go downstairs in one of the, one of the rooms and uh, play cards that guys would play video games and tell old stories. And it was a great bonding experience for all of us and great to just, be around those guys and tell different stories of their careers and their journeys with basketball. So on that level, it was fun, but to just be in a hotel 24 seven and just be able to go outside just to go play your game and come back was, was a totally different experience. And I'm glad that the fans are back um, and we're going to be able to do things on a more normal level this year, for sure. Well, it's been great to have you involved with the Bayheims army. I'm glad you're involved again. It's great, you know, for the Syracuse fans, I can't, I can't imagine anybody's not aware, but maybe they are, especially if they don't live in the area. It's been great having you back in central New York uh, for the past several years, coaching Liverpool High School. Uh, you, you've won a state title already in your young career. <laughs> <laughs> and now you add the title of dad. Yeah, I'm uh, a man of many hats at this moment, um, but dad is the toughest one. It's the, the toughest one so far. Uh, but I'm enjoying that journey. And it's so fun being back in Syracuse and in the community. And I appreciate all the love and support that we get. Um, you know, people even come out and watch my games at Liverpool, our games at Liverpool, just because they know that I've coached or played at Syracuse. So having that connection and having that love and support um, in this community from all the fans and, and friends is just second to none. 
Well, I appreciate you being on the podcast. We're going to have to get you back on again because we were we were kind of focused on Beheim's Army and the TBT this time. There's so many other topics I'd love to to pick your brain about, uh, including like transfers and the portal and immediate oh, mobility. Because you know, as we know, you transferred here mm-hmm. from Illinois. Um, you know, NIL and paying players. Um, so let's let's agree here before I let you go. We're going to get you back on again soon. 100%. I would love it. All right. I'm going to hold you to it. We got you on tape. All right, Mike. All right, Ryan. Thank you very much. Thank you.